Did you know that only 14 countries in the world still use the Fahrenheit scale to measure temperature? The United States of America is one of those 14. Meanwhile, most of the countries use the Celsius scale, which oftentimes results in confusion whenever an American speaks to a non-American about the weather. But besides the two most well-known scales in the world, there are other ways in which one can measure and quantify temperature. And in today's video, we will talk about all of them. So, welcome back to Curiosity Factor, and let's get started. As we've mentioned in the intro, the two most well-known temperature scales are Celsius and Fahrenheit. The Celsius scale, which is used the most, was invented by Anders Celsius in 1742. He created this temperature scale by using only two defined points based on the physical characteristics of water. You probably know where this is going, right? Well, you'll be surprised to find out that in the beginning, the Celsius scale had 0 degrees Celsius as the boiling point for water, and 100 degrees Celsius points was defined as the freezing point of water, completely the opposite of the scale we know and use today. The reason why Celsius created the scale this way was because the thermometer was mostly used to measure temperatures outside, and they usually fell between minus 20 and 40 degrees Celsius. By setting 100 degrees Celsius as the freezing point of water, the scale avoided using negative numbers when it was cold outside. It was only several years after Celsius's invention that scientists began using the inverted scale, which had 0 degrees Celsius as the freezing point and 100 degrees Celsius as the boiling point of water. It is not known who was the first person to invent this scale that it's still used to this day, but biologists seem to love it. Because plants are at risk of dying at 0 degrees Celsius, since water freezes at this temperature, scientists found it more obvious and easier to also indicate temperatures below the freezing point. And that's how the scale we know today became a reality. Now, the Celsius scale indicates temperatures below 0 degrees Celsius with negative numbers, and temperatures above with positive numbers. The Fahrenheit scale was invented by Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit in 1724, but he initially started forming the fundamentals for his scale earlier, in 1708. That was when Fahrenheit travelled to Denmark and met Danish astronomer Ole Christensen Roma. From Roma, he learned about the need in the scientific world for consistent thermometers, which had to be identical to each other so that measurements could be compared. So, Fahrenheit borrowed the idea of a temperature scale from his new friend Roma, but got rid of the decimals on the scale by rounding them up to 8 degrees for freezing water and 24 degrees for optimal body heat. This ended up being the original Fahrenheit scale, but he didn't stop there. Over the years, he tweaked this temperature scale, but the exact moments at which he made changes is not quite clear, as Fahrenheit did not keep a record of his experiments. But, it is believed that around 1713, he decided to multiply all the numbers on his scale by 4, giving the scale a range of 96 degrees Fahrenheit, with the freezing point of water at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Later on, Fahrenheit would ditch the body temperature as a calibration point, as he discovered it was unreliable. This was the point when it was observed that children have actually higher body temperatures than adults and older people. Instead, Fahrenheit started using the boiling point of water as the top calibration point on his scale, which would be 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit was also the first person ever to use mercury as a thermometric liquid, as he found brine and alcohol to be unreliable too. But with mercury, Fahrenheit was able to make thermometers that were able to measure up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. While Celsius and Fahrenheit had contributed a lot to the world of science, these are not the only two temperature scales invented. For example, there is also the Kelvin scale, invented by William Thomson, 1st Baron Kelvin, in 1848. But the difference between this scale and the others is that there are no below zero temperatures. A temperature of 0K is called an absolute zero, or the absence of all heat. Zero kelvins is considered the temperature at which particles stop moving completely, but don't worry, it is impossible to reach this absolute zero. Similar to Kelvin scale, the Rankine scale is based around the same absolute zero. So this scale starts at zero degrees Rankine, and a change of one degree Rankine is the same as a change of one degree Fahrenheit. 
This particular scale was originally used in the United States and France, while the Kelvin scale continues to be used to this day, but mostly in science. Other temperature scales that you may or may not have heard about are the Newton scale, the Roma scale, Delisle scale, and Raymer scale. In 1701, Isaac Newton published a method of determining the rate of heat loss of a body, and introduced what is known today as the Newton scale. This scale had 0 degrees as the freezing point of water, and 12 degrees as the human body temperature. Also in 1701, Ole Christensen Romer created one of the first practical thermometers, using wine as a thermometer liquid. His scale was based on the freezing points of pure water being 7.5 degrees and the boiling point being 60. The Romer scale was established in 1730 and had its zero set at the freezing point of water and the 80 degree mark represented the boiling point of water. The Delisle scale was invented just two short years later in 1732 and Joseph Nicholas Delisle had set his scale by using the temperature of boiling water as the fixed zero point, just like the initial Celsius scale did. Did you know about all these temperature scales? Let us know in the comments section below if you have any fun facts about any of the scales we've mentioned today. And if you want to learn more fun facts, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again in our next video.